Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is not a good day in Alabama, especially just to the east of Montgomery in Lee County, Alabama. Uh, it has been updated by ABC News that 14 people have been killed in a string of tornadoes that touched down uh, in uh, Lee County, Alabama. That's uh, one photograph there that was posted uh, this afternoon at 7.57 p.m. Uh, by the ABC affiliate WCJB uh, in Lee County, Alabama there. Uh, according to the article here, more than 10 people are dead after at least two tornadoes hit Lee County Sunday afternoon. According to the Lee County Sheriff, the Sheriff didn't give any details about the location or the circumstances of the deaths. Uh, early in the afternoon, the Lee County EMA said the worst of the danger was near uh, Beauregard and there were two confirmed fatalities in that area. Uh, our hearts and prayers are certainly going out to the families of those that have uh, lost loved ones in this tragedy of these uh, devastating tornadoes. And just to give you an idea on the map here, Alabama here uh, on the screen, if we back out just a little bit, you have Mississippi right here, Alabama here, Montgomery, and to the east there is Lee County. Auburn University, of course, is in Lee County, Alabama as well. Uh, and of course, it goes down towards Columbus, Georgia, uh, the northwest side, not quite in the Columbus City itself, but very close to Columbus there. And that's kind of a high elevation right there. I've traveled that area many, many times there, going to Pine Mountain, Alabama, there where good friends of ours uh, uh, have a cabin up in that area that we've stayed at. Uh, but at any rate there, uh, Nina is uh, the friend that we have that lives up in that area. She actually watches our broadcast here. So our hearts and prayers go out to those, uh, f those friends of ours up in that area and those listeners. Certainly uh, pray that none of our followers have, have died in this as well. Anyway, uh, moving on into other news, we have got a string of uh, uh, pages open today here on the screen for you. Some of this is about, uh, things that I'll be speaking about on Patreon, and uh, we're kind of going to dive into it just a little bit here, but I have unraveled a very extensive uh, network of information about the uh, private military contractors that are uh, funded and organized by Russia as well as the United States, What who they're involved with, what they're doing, uh, who owns these companies, how they're connected together, and you're going to be shocked to find out some of these companies even are interwoven together. Wagner and the former known Blackwater group that is now uh, under a different name, Academia, uh, that was bought out, and it, it would really be surprising to know. I would love to be able to share that information with you here on Israeli News Live, everything that I'm going to be speaking about but because of the sensitivity of the information, it will be on Patreon uh, a little later tonight because I will continue the recording until I am done after we touch the news here. Uh, let's get right into it, though. This is uh, being reported. Whoop. Uh, shows like they're already knocking down my websites here, so we can't pull it back up. Uh, try to reload the page right here, see if it's going to do this for us here. Okay. Amman News here is reporting the Syrian army offensive will target key towns in northeast Idlib. We're talking about the Syrian military. Uh, the Tiger forces are, are allegedly getting ready to launch a massive military operation. Uh, they, some are saying near Idlib, and this is the area that Russia and Turkey came to a ceasefire agreement, but they are specifically targeting one area uh, that is south of Aleppo, and I'm going to try to show you that on the map here in just a second there. Uh, pull the map up here for you for Syria. If we zoom in here on Aleppo, Idlib, of course, let me see if I can get it just right here. Idlib is this province right here. Aleppo is here. And there, there is a buffer zone around this whole region right here uh, that is a 20-kilometer buffer zone inside of here. And according to the report right there, is there's this little particular town here that uh, is that is going to be targeted by the Tiger forces, and it is in the buffer zone itself. 
Uh, so Tiger Forces moving their formations uh, south of Aleppo here, and they will be targeting the town uh, that is a stronghold for the Turkish military as well as the jihadists that the Turkish military has been backing. That's one of the first things we're going to be looking at here. Another thing we're looking at as well, as I reported to you guys the other day, showed you the military escort uh, that uh, the Russians were giving to a bus uh, line, a uh, group of buses that were headed down uh, to the Altamf region. And specifically, they were going to the Rukban camp to try to bring those uh, refugees at the Ruckman camp, which you see pictured here on Sputnik's uh, 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 page right here, bring those back into the Syrian province. As we reported, it was very obvious to us that the Russians are moving these refugees out because a confrontation between Russia, Syria, and the United States could very much be a reality in the not-so-distant future. Now, according to Sputnik, the U.S. blocked the evacuation convoys at the Syrians' Ruckman camp, according to the Russian MOD, uh, stating that the U.S. aid has rejected the demand of the Joint Russian-Syrian Coordination Center on Refugee Repatriation to allow the transport convoys enter the territory at the Atomf zone, uh, the Sulamantan said at a news briefing. So these refugees, some 40,000 displaced people, are not going to be leaving. Uh, and that's probably give or take about 10,000 men that are there. And there are those that believe that, that uh, the, the men that are in this refugee camp is one of the places they're pulling the jihadist fighters that they have need of and also for ISIS. And the Syrian government, as well as the Russians, are wanting to go in there and root out the last remaining ISIS stronghold. And they're camped in and around the U.S. forces at Al-Tanf in southern Syria, which I'll give you a bird's eye view of that as well. So let's, let's pull back over here. When we look at Syria, Al-Tanf is right down in this area here where the highway crosses from Iraq into uh, southern Syria, very close to the Jordanian border as well. And this is the region that um, there, there is a lot of contention right now. I'll kind of give you more of a, uh, a view from satellite imagery there. So this is al Tanf, this whole region down in this area here on your map here. This is the border here of Syria. We have the Jordanian side here. We have the Iraqi side here. And of course, the U.S. controls this border crossing coming into the Syrian territory. And they have already put a 50 kilometer buffer zone in here to where the Syrians and Russians are not allowed in. But Syria and Russia appear to be getting ready to try to take this area back. And uh, we know the U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump has said that 200 U.S. soldiers won't remain in that location. Now, with that being said, uh, uh, one of the things that we're going to be looking at on Patreon this evening is also those military contractors, the Wagner Group, uh, Blackwater, or the remnants of Blackwater that have now uh, become what they call the, um, uh, I'll, I'll get back into that name here in just a little bit there, but the, uh, the remnants of the Blackwater uh, Group that is also operating inside of Syria as well, uh, amongst other places that they have operated in the past, Iraq, now Venezuela, and uh, so we're going to be going into all that issues. But another issue, as I had mentioned earlier today, was uh, Don, or excuse me, yesterday was the Ukrainian uh, issue, and that is because 40 Ukrainian troops uh, have been uh, taken down in battle. I believe this is one reason why we have seen, uh, in one case here inside near Sevastopol, we saw this video footage here that I reported yesterday of Russian troops that are moving into formation there uh, in this area here of Sevastopol, and also why we see, too, that the United States military has moved into Romania, uh, the, uh, the 33... Uh, uh, Apache helicopters that we see here on the deck, as well as uh, the United States has also got the large uh, movement of um, uh, Abram tanks that we reported yesterday, uh, U.S. Abrams uh, and uh, the Black Hawk helicopters, the uh, CH-47 uh, Chinook 
the H-64 Apaches, all this military equipment is now being, uh, is now in Romania. And uh, in some of the photos that we have here, uh, and let me back up, see if I can pick up one of the photos I want to show you. Here we go, right here, the equipment being offloaded in Romania. Now, we don't know exactly where this equipment actually came from, but it's being offloaded there. And one of the things that I have uh, really thought about, and I need to back up to the map to show you uh, my thoughts on this right here. So we will back out of Syria right here and move over just a little bit uh, to Romania. And there's a couple of things I did not mention in the broadcast the other day that I think is worth mentioning now. Romania is strategic for the U.S. military to stage their military equipment there. You have to remember, up in here in Odessa, Ukraine, which if you'll notice, Ukraine borders with Romania, right here on the, where the Black Sea is, they border together. You have Moldova in the middle there, but then up in this area here to the, to the far um, west of Ukraine, Romania and Ukraine share a border there as well. I think the strategic side of this, though, because the helicopters are at the seaport of Romania, is that Ukraine and Odessa are a land connection right here. It'd be very easy for the U.S. to move their Abrams into Ukraine if they're going to get into a confrontation with Russia over Crimea as well. All right, not to mention, you also have to consider the fact that in Romania is where the United States moved nuclear warheads to this country here back during the time of the, as we called it, the staged coup by Erdogan in Turkey. Uh, we believed it was a pretext and that Erdogan was working in concert with the United States in order to be able to have a justification for the U.S. to say, we got to get our nukes out of Turkey. They were moved to Romania. So the U.S. moved those nukes into Romania. Now we're moving all this other military hardware there. And of course, by putting them in Romania, what we have done is we positioned our nuclear capability actually closer to Moscow and St. Petersburg as well. Uh, may not look like a lot of difference, but if you consider our military base being uh, more here to the south of Turkey, uh, and then we look at that big of a jump from Romania, and if, if you put it up here near Ukraine's border, we're much closer to Moscow with a nuclear weapon, we're much closer to St. Petersburg, which is right there uh, to the east of Latvia. Uh, so we're very close in hitting some major targets uh, without being inside of Ukraine uh, directly. Not to mention, you have Crimea within striking distance as well. So I've watched the buildup, uh, how the coup was faked. And of course, when the coup was being faked, one of the big issues that I said then was that uh, Turkey under Erdogan, him being a very close NATO ally, although he's pretended like he's not, we know that Erdogan is a good close ally to NATO because when Libya was in an uproar here and we had our special forces that were working as contractors then in Libya as well, protecting the CIA assets, the overthrow of the Libyan government, Gaddafi, was in order to be able to take um, uh, chemical weapons and slip those out of the country into Turkey and then Turkey, Erdogan would then move those into Syria, which in 2013 would be used against the civilian population and blamed on uh, the president uh, of Syria, President Bashar al-Assad, as if he was the culprit behind all of this. We know this because Aaron Erdem, uh, the MK member for, or the MP member for the Turkish parliament, stated before the Turkish parliament that it was the blood of the Syrian children was on the hands of the Turkish government. And he indicts in his own statement, Erdogan, then prime minister, of being guilty for allowing uh, the weapons to the weapons grade uh, 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 sarin gas, along with the, 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 the ability to make the bombs to be smuggled in by ISIS militants with the help of Turkish military assets to do so. Now, and I also believe that this was a justification, this fake coup, in order for the Turkish government then to say that uh, there were elements of the Kurdish faction there in, which were fighting to liberate Syria. And there's another thing that the uh, U.S. Uh, 
uh, did not want to see where the Kurds to liberate or stop ISIS uh, in their advance, as we saw with Senate, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry back when he was having a uh, private meeting that was recorded that later became public, that they were allowing ISIS to do their job, hoping that they would overthrow Bashar al-Assad. Now, while all that is going on, then what do we have later? We have Erdogan puts his troops inside of Syria. Been a plan all along, even though they act like that Russia is the enemy and that Turkey has become a defector. In reality, President Putin has been working with the Turkish government and with the U.S. government as well in behind the scenes. And you're going to find that out, those of you that watch on Patreon, as I go into a little bit more details about that uh, later today. So this is why, and I think the justification, like I said before, is, the, is this large loss of life. 40 Ukrainian soldiers, according to the uh, FortRuss.com, uh, on, on March the 1st, 2019, is the reason why we are seeing this movement of the assets uh, of U.S. military getting ready to try to step in, maybe uh, to step up the heat on uh, the separatists in eastern Ukraine. So, with that being stated, we've already brought out the different movements of the military there. And of course, uh, as I mentioned too, this was on the Russian uh, version of RT, excuse me, German version, Stern, Putin's new rocket has surpassed the West's wildest expectations. And keep in mind, I say that they're working together, but you got to remember, that's Putin. That doesn't mean that all the generals are on his side. I don't know what side, who's on or what's what, but eventually... You have to remember, the American people are what's going to be the enemy uh, for this new world order because we are a nation with freedoms. We are a nation of freedom of speech, freedom of the press. We are a nation of right to bear arms. And these are all the things that go against a new world order. And this is what I'm seeing coming. So they're definitely going to take down the U.S. And, of course, they have the rockets that have surpassed their wildest expectation, and that is none other than the Zircon rocket that they're planning on firing at the U.S. in the not-so-distant future. And, of course, we already spoke about all the gold that's being stolen uh, by the different countries. The United States is stealing the gold out of Syria, and uh, Russia is stealing the gold from Venezuela. Uh, and, of course, it's all being claimed to be handed over, uh, but it's still, it is what it is. Interesting enough, though, when we speak about Venezuela, though, Bolivia... That's a little bit further south in uh, South America, though. Bolivia opens an anti-imperialist military school to counter U.S. foreign policies. President Evo Morales said the academy will encourage anti-colonial and anti-capitalist thinking to negate U.S.-based schools that target indigenous people. Uh, I thought that was rather interesting. So I'm sure that the U.S. will they'll have them on the radar before long and after we get through overthrowing a few other nations for this new world order, uh, then the Bolivia will definitely be uh, on the chopping block as well. So at least he's thinking ahead of time. He sees what's happening. He's concerned about it. And uh, that's where it's headed. So as we get into the, the issue that I'm going to be speaking about on Patreon, Russian mercenaries reportedly in Venezuela to protect Maduro. Uh, I, I still almost laugh at this when I see this. And I wonder if Maduro really realizes that uh, a lot of these world leaders, Putin in, in particular, uh, President Trump, are working for some of the same backers in behind the scenes. That's what we're going to take a look on tonight on Patreon. So those of you that watch us here on Israeli News Live, I hope you get a chance to join us over on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I'll put the link for you in the description below. Uh, it's it's a paid uh, subscription platform, but it's only a dollar a month unless you feel in your heart you want to contribute more. There's many people that do, and we thank you for that. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the support of this ministry, and our teaching for this week will actually be loaded tomorrow. Uh, I'll be going into uh, uh, going into the issue with uh, um, uh, Israel, this reptilian race, and how does this fit in with biblical prophecy of Israel being blind and their eyes coming open because there is a truth to that as well. And we need to address that and really look into this very deeply. Pray for us. We've had a lot of sickness in our family there. Uh, both the children have been very, very sick. Uh, they, they're they in the recovery stage now. Uh, also, my father-in-law, he has now fell, fell ill with the very same sickness. 
and uh, it is very tremendous uh, flu that is happening here, high fevers, uh, vomiting, everything, you name it. And so we're trying our best to avoid it. Me and my wife, pray for my wife as well. She had a very difficult situation last night um, and uh, just a lot of different issues that are going on in our family. So we covet your prayers here. And, thank and of course, don't forget the conference, uh, the conference coming up, the coming Persecution Orlando Conference, March 30th, 2019. Uh, again, all you have to do when you look at the information on our website there, if you click on it, make sure you hover over it, it'll turn green, click on the link itself. Um, it's going to tell you about the, the, the cost of the conference. We have people coming in from overseas to see the conference. Uh, we have a very precious brother that I've been looking forward to meeting myself anyway, coming from uh, 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 the Netherlands. And uh, so uh, a lot of people coming from far away to, to, to come to this conference. And uh, you can donate uh, by going, just click it for a donation. Note that it's for the conference, please. There's a way you can leave a little description when you make that donation, put in there. This is for the Orlando Conference, March the 30th, which if you scroll down, it's 9 a.m. It starts at 9 a.m. We've allotted all the way to 9 p.m. Don't know exactly how long the conference will go, uh, but th there's myself, uh, Steve Pigeon, and my wife all speaking in this conference. It's at the Embassy Suites by Hilton, 225 Shortcrest Drive, Ultimate Springs, Florida, 332701. So if you want, you can stay at the hotel there. Uh, so we look forward to meeting you there, and that's one reason why we have a long period of time being there, so we get a chance to shake everybody's hand before they before they leave the conference there. Uh, if you do not, are not able to get your ticket online, all you need to do is make a notation. You have an ability to click on here and comment in the, in the description below. I haven't approved comments lately yet, but I will. And, uh, and I will respond to you, but you can click on there as a comment and say, Steve, we will be at the conference. We're going to pay at the door. Uh, or if you didn't get a response in an email from your donation online, you can make a comment here. Steve, we, we donated online for the tickets, me and my wife, me and my husband, uh, me and my wife and another friend of ours. Just let us know that. And that way I'll comment, respond to you that we have you down because we are limited to 150 at this conference. We think we'll be pretty much to capacity or there near, near about that. So anyway, blessings to you all. I'm Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.